Hey friends, I want you to know I stopped by the school and we checked on the chickens and we checked on Steve and he's growing new leaves and he's so happy and he misses you all too just like we do. And he wanted me to read you guys Our Chaining Steve by Alan Zwiebel, illustrated by David Castro. Here you go. Dear kids, a long time ago when you were little, mom and I took you to where we wanted to build a house for us to live in. But in order to build there, men had to come and clear the land. I remember there was one tree, however, that the three of you couldn't stop staring at. Adam thought it was crying, Lindsay said it looked nervous, and Sari, who was only two years old, couldn't pronounce the word tree and called it Steve. I love you, Steve, she kept saying. And then Adam and Lindsay started saying it too. And not before long, Mom and I got the hint and asked the builder to please save Steve. The day we moved in, Steve was there to greet us. He quickly worked his way into your lives as a swing holder, target, third base, hiding place, jump rope turner, and when our dryer broke down, he held our underwear with pride. <laughs> Right there in the center of our yard, this weird looking tree grew to become the center of our outdoor life. Through all our backyard barbecues, camp outs, dance parties, or when Adam and Lindsay started getting crushes on the Simon kids next door, Steve adjusted to our every need. And it wasn't always easy standing tall through snowstorms in the winter. Brr. Or when Uncle Chester napped in the hammock couldn't possibly have been fun. Not to mention the time that the sewer overflowed and Steve sucked up all the smelly water before it drowned Kirby. Look, there's Kirby. Then got so sick himself that the tree doctor had to give Steve a haircut that made him look like a big thumb. Through the years, Mom and I have tried to show you in a world filled with strangers the peace that comes with having things you can count on and a safe place to return to after a hard day or a long trip. Which brings me to the point of this letter. Last week, a storm hit. And though we spared Steve's life a long time ago, this time we couldn't save him. What happened? He fell down. Are we sad? Sure we are. But even in his final moments when he could have fallen on our house, sorry swings, Kirby's house, or mom's garden, Steve performed his last trick and protected all of us to the very end. And friends like this are hard to find. So, when you come home from your grandma's house next week, Steve will not be able to greet you as he's done in the past, and I'm sorry. But please know that Steve will always be with us in our hearts and our thoughts and in a different tree at the other end of the yard. Look, we bet Carrie's the tree house now. See you next week. Love, Dad. The end. I can't wait to see you guys so soon. Steve the tree really misses you and the chickens really miss you too. Stay safe, and I'll see you soon. Hi, Firefly friends. I've missed you all so, so much, and I hope that you're all staying safe inside and remembering to wash your hands. 
Tonight, we're going to read Knuckle Bunny by Mo Williams. Not so long ago, before she could even speak word, Trixie went on an errand with her daddy. Trixie and her daddy went down the block. They went through the park. Past the school and into the laundromat. Trixie helped her daddy put the laundry into the machine. Oh, she is being so helpful right now. She's over here. Oh my gosh, but where's Knuckle Bunny? I see him. She even got to put the money into the machines. And then they left. But a block or so later, Trixie realized something. Trixie turned to her daddy and said, Aggle, flaggle, kababble. That's right, replied her daddy. We're going home. I don't think that's what Trixie was trying to say. Aggle, flaggle, kababble. Trixie said again, Paggle, plabble, wobble, flabble, snurp. Now please don't get fussy, said her daddy. Well, she had no choice. Trixie fall, and she went boneless. She's trying so hard to communicate to her daddy what's going on. She did everything she could to show how unhappy she was. By the time they got home, her daddy was unhappy too. As soon as Trixie mo Trixie's mommy opened the door, she asked, where's Knuckle Bunny? <gasps> That's what Trixie must have been trying to tell her daddy the whole time. The whole family ran down the block and they ran through the park. They zoomed past the school and into the laundromat. Trixie's daddy looked for Knuckle Bunny and looked and looked and looked, but Knuckle Bunny was nowhere to be found. So Trixie's daddy decided to look harder until <gasps> Knuckle Bunny! And those were the very first words Trixie ever said. The end.